Hey guys, it's Mike with iReviewGear.com. I'm up here in the mountains in Utah. Um, been hiking around a little bit in a couple of different boots from Crispy. What I wanted to do today is do a video um, review uh, and kind of tutorial on how to fit a boot to your foot once you've purchased it. Now we also have a how to purchase the right boot video. Um, it's going to be available soon, but uh, assume you've picked the right boot you get it home the first time, what are the steps you take to make sure that that foot, that boot, fits your foot just right, you get the maximum amount of comfort out of it. Uh, first of all, you know, don't do this out in the out in the forest like I'm doing. You shouldn't be out here fitting the boot the first time in the woods. You want to break it in that way, but you should do it at home. The reason for that is a lot of manufacturers, you know, they don't want to take a boot back that uh, has some wear on it and some dirt and stuff you've worn it outside they're not going to take it back so do it inside in the comfort of your home and then you can say hey I never wore this boot outside enough no problem taking it back if it just doesn't fit your foot most high quality boots today though are going to fit you just fine but let's talk about how to get the most out of it the first thing I do is check out their insoles I take the insole out I've got the insole on this one uh, still in there the crispy insole pops right out um, I got the H2 the two boots uh, to kind of demo this today the Hunter, which is right here by Crispy, and then the Spider HTG. Both just really nice boots, and they have some unique features that we'll talk about. But, uh, you know, I check out the insole. They're all easy to come out. The first time a little bit harder than the next time. But uh, there's the insole. It's probably above average insole, honestly, for most uh, expensive boots you'll get these days. But I take the insole out. It might be hard to see, but we'll do it again later. I fit it to my foot and say, hey, does that uh, arch support about naturally where my arch support would be? If not, I look at replacing it with a different insole, or if, if I've got special foot needs and have problems, I put a new insole in almost always. So I've got the super feet orange in this one, that's for high intensity hiking. So I took out the insole and I replaced it with this, uh, this super feet. We'll talk about that later. The next thing I do is, you can see it's unlaced the entire way. So get the boot unlaced, get its maximum width and flexibility. That's how you do it. Unlace it all the way. I like to do this in the evening too. That's when the maximum amount of swelling takes place in your foot. I think it's important to fit the boot to your foot when that maximum amount of swelling takes place because if you go on a hike, your foot's gonna get swelled up pretty quickly. Um, so you wanna fit it to that kind of condition. So do it in the evening. We're going to zoom in here and talk about the particulars now of getting this boot on your foot and fitting it and lacing it up correctly. Um, so I'm going to step off, zoom in, and we'll, we'll pick it up from there. All right, guys, I'm back. You won't be able to see my face much, but you will see the most important part, and that's this boot. So first segment, we talked about getting unlaced, taking the insole out, replacing it with an insole if you need. And the next is the fitting of the boot. You want to wear a good merino wool sock. I've actually picked up quite a few of them at Sam's Club or Costco. They're fantastic. And I like them in that mid-weight. I don't like them super thick. I don't like them super thin. I like them in the middle. In the middle, they don't bunch up on the back of your heel and cause a blister right in this area, which I frequently get if I don't have the right sock. So I like the middleweight merino, all merino wool boot. You can even choose to use a liner. I don't need to, but you could use a liner underneath that. But I choose just to go straight merino wool mid-weight. Uh, hiking sock. So the next thing is I put the boot in there. And like this, this thing feels pretty roomy. You know, I got plenty of room in there. It feels pretty good. Um, so now I start lacing it up. And on each lace, I feel for snugness. Now with this one, it's a, it's a push through. So we push it through each section. We're just going to do two here. Take a break because you'll get the idea. So I'm going to go up two sections. And that's what I like to do when I'm fitting the boot the first time, is go up uh, two different sections. Now, on each one of those sections, start on the lower one, start pulling until you can just feel firmness down and to the side. So right there I can feel firmness. Then I go to the next section. Pull it until I can feel firmness side to side and downward. Then I go to the next section. You get a little loosening right there, but you know that's not that big of a deal because you kind of know you know where it's at. And that bottom one now doesn't adjust 
just the one below it uh, loosens a little bit. Okay, firmness, top, down, and side to side. For me, it's just right there. Now, I put on a pair of my son's boots after he's worn, well, a pair of my boots after he's worn them. They're so laced up so tight, I can't even stand it. So I have to take them all the way out and do it over again. I generally don't borrow boots, but he's my son. Okay, next section, firm it up. You can see those two have stayed the same. It's pulling on these two. Firmness down and firmness to the side. Then I go to here. Now here's a critical juncture. At this point, I hold it like this. I stand up and I lift up. I rock back and forth. I try to slide my foot forwards and backwards. Now on this boot, it's got the ankle brace support system, unique to Crispy, where they've got this extra padding and uh, stabilization through here. So it kind of clinches on your ankle bone and won't let it slide forward and backwards, which is a great feature. Not all boots have that, but this one does. So on most boots, this is a critical juncture. You wanna make sure there's no jumping back and forth of your foot as you slide it back and forth. So a couple things you can do. One is just lace it really tight, get it good and firm there, and that has stopped the side to side movement or the back and forth movement. The other thing you can do is take two loops around at this point and now snug it down right there. With two loops forward, it keeps it stable. You can see even when I let it go. And that really now locks in that spot. So even if it moves up here later on, your knot comes loose, that stays, stays good and stable. I go around the next one, tighten here. Now I'm just looking for tightness on the back of my calf and on the front. I move to the forward position, tighten it, move it back, tighten it a little bit more. Then this crispy boot has a grommet here in the middle which gets the tongue in place, which is great. I go through that up to the top, rotate it forward, backwards tighten it, and then cinch it with this knot. I like to make a loop with two loops around it. That way, that knot will not slip and it's still easy to get out. Now with that, I've got good support of my ankle, a lot due to my lacing, but some due to the ankle brace support system unique to this crispy boot. I've got this tie right here, so my foot can't go back and forth and cause abrasion. I've got plenty of room that I've allowed up here. It's just snug, but not tight. And then I've got good support in my ankle up here. Um, so with that laced up correctly, I now stand up and take a few good hard steps. Now my heel is not pulling up, hardly at all, which is great. When I slide forward, I have plenty of toe room in my toe cavity but in the toe box, but I'm not getting slippage forward and my toe's not hitting the end. If you're descending and your toe's always hitting the end, you're gonna have problems. With this, I can tell in a nice jolt, I'm not getting my foot hit up into here. That's because this extra loop and tightness I took here, and that'll really cinch you in. So essentially, that's how to fit a boot to your foot once you get it. It's not complex, but I don't think hardly anybody does it. Hey guys, it's Mike, I'm back. I showed you how to fit that boot to your foot. Check the insole, replace it with a better one if you need to. If not, a lot of boots come with great in insoles. This is gonna be just fine. Take a look at our buyer's guide. Make sure you get the right boot for conditions you're in. Unlace it the entire way. Start at the bottom, snug it up as you go all the way up. At this critical juncture around your ankle, that's gonna prevent slide back and forth. Consider wrapping it around twice and doing a knot right here then go up lace by lace, feeling the comfort, feeling the snugness, and a lot of it's a personal feel. I like boots pretty tight around my ankle. That's why, you know, a lot of times I do choose crispy because of that ankle brace support system. Um, so hopefully you'll look at the rest of our reviews on iReviewGear.com. Hope this has been a help to you. Please comment if it has or, or add your comments on what you found uh, is a good way to make a boot fit.